Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we will be coloring a Phalaenopsis orchid. But not for aesthetical reasons, but more scientific reasons, let's call it like that. Simply because I want to test out a theory. You might know that some people suggest you don't cut the flower spikes because orchids actually absorb nutrients and sap from the flower spikes. So actually what they do, they recycle that sap. Now in one of my very old videos, I said that I don't think it's the case, but I could never test it. So this has been just my thoughts on the subject, but today we can definitely test it using blue dye. So what I will do today is actually color one of the flower spikes. I'll make a puncture wound in the flower spike, make the orchid absorb that food dye, enter it into the system, but not let the food dye drip in the pot. Now, if you remember what I did with this orchid you see right there, this is a blue orchid, we artificially colored it. Bad thing is, the paint managed to get into the pot, the orchid absorbed the paint through the roots and the leaves got colored as well, the other flowers got colored as well. I'm not sure when I'm gonna post this video, so I'll link it down below to the video with the artificially dyed Phalaenopsis right there so you see what we did. I wanted to use that orchid for this experiment as well, but it's useless because we cannot say that the sap recirculated from the flower spike or it was due to the paint dripping inside the pot and being absorbed by the roots. So that failed. This is why we're gonna color this orchid today. So this time I will try to make sure the paint does not drip inside the pot, is not absorbed by the roots, and I wanna see if the sap is actually recirculated. If it is recirculated, we should see it in the leaves, in the veins, actually the vessels of the leaves. And not only that, we might be able to see it on the other flowers as well. So this is pretty exciting. And just so you know, this is the 21st of December when I'm doing this and we'll observe the evolution in time. So just like we did with the other orchid, we'll make a puncture wound on the flower spike. I choose to make it quite high on the flower spike so the pigment goes faster into the flowers. It doesn't really matter where you make the puncture wound, so let's see. Okay, I think this is enough. And to avoid the same mistake we did last time, I'm not gonna try to create a funnel because the paint will most definitely drip. I cannot seal it. But what we will do is put a cotton piece on this cut wound. I will secure it with some scotch tape, but I will not create a pool of dye. All I want is to saturate this cotton with the dye, make the cotton sit on the wound, and that should be enough to get some pigment on the orchid. So I'm gonna place this cotton right on the wound and then I'm gonna try to secure it with my scotch tape. I am making a sort of a funnel shape, but I am trying to seal off the bottom of my sort of funnel. So I'm gonna secure this just a little bit more and then we're gonna pour in the pigment. Okay, so I secured my little funnel. Problem is, I think the flower spike is slightly broken. It's not completely, it's not completely broken. I hope it's gonna last. So we'll see what happens. So as you can see, I left a bit of the cotton open so I can actually soak it. I'm gonna use this little spoon. I'm gonna put some pigment here and I'll do my best not to spill the pigment inside the pot. So we're gonna work with small quantities. Let's see if I can seal this off a little bit more while still being in frame. Okay. So theoretically, this should just soak up the pigment. Okay, a bit dripped, but not in the pot. So that's good. Let's see if I can pour a little bit more. And that is perfect. I need to go to the sink right now so this doesn't drip in the pot. I'll come back to show you the pot. And fingers crossed that I don't mess this up once again. And I didn't mess it up. Okay, so this is my little operation here, the little funnel that I made. It's not dripping. Let me show you a close up. See the flower spike is not dripping. There is no blue color in the pot or anything. So theoretically, if the flower spike is not compromised, I don't know if it's actually bent. So we're gonna see in a few hours if this orchid starts to obtain color. And then in a few days or even less than that, we will take a look at the leaves because as you might've noticed in the previous case, the color change was almost instant. Even in the leaves, we could see um, the veining, the blue veining. So we'll see what happens with this orchid. And hopefully this experiment works and we can draw some conclusions in the end, just learn more about our orchids. Alrighty, I'll come back when I think it's a good time to make an update. Okay, so this is day two of the experiment, and as you can see, things are looking different. I took a closer look at that flower spike from yesterday, and indeed, it was completely broken. 
So yeah, I was contemplating and redoing the video, but you know what? Even if it's a fail, it's a part of the experiment. So keep that in mind if you ever want to replicate this experiment. Mini phalaenopsis are quite fragile. Don't make the cut very deep because the flower spike will break. So I thought of a different setup. What I did was soak a cotton Q-tip into that dye and placed it against the wound. So I have contact at all times. Because yesterday I discovered that cotton didn't make contact with the wound properly, like in the first place. Again, because the mini fowls have a very thin flower spike and it's hard to be precise. So I think this is better. I at least see it. If I see the cotton is not soaked anymore, I can simply re-soak it. I don't even need to remove it from the flower stake here. So <laughs> this is the arrangement. Okay, so I'll make another update when I have something to show you. We'll see how this does. Okay, just wanted to show you something really, really fast. It's been 15 minutes, not more. I was just checking if this cotton swab is still attached and doing its job. And I really hope you can see on this camera, you see that little vein? Look on the stem of the actual flower, the bottom part, that little vein has a shade of blue already. So 15 minutes and um, yeah, the thing started to work. And yeah, first thing it does, it goes up. Let's see the leaves for a second. Okay, the leaves appear to be absolutely green, as you can see. And let me show you a comparison to the other orchid because I didn't show you. The one that had dye dripping on its leaves, just so you see how the leaves look like, the veining. Okay, this is the other orchid. Do you see the blue shading on the leaf? In reality, it looks a lot more striking, but I really hope the camera picks it up, particularly on the tip. Do you see it? It's a blue tint. This is what I want to see in the other orchid as well, if it happens. And just to show you, this is the blue dyed orchid. The spike is still blue, the buds are still blue. The orchid just had sap dripping in the pot. And let me show you the evidence of that. Do you see the blue on this root? There you go. So this is why this orchid started to turn blue. Oh, perfect. Look at this. Finally, I can make it show on camera. You see, this is what I am looking for in the other orchid as well. I just want to see if the leaves draw something from those flower spikes. Alrighty, so I'll make another update when I have something to show you. Alrighty, so this is the fifth or sixth day already. Um, so yeah, the experiment uh, failed partially, but not completely. So, as you can see, we have a little bit of an accident here. What I discovered is that this food dye acts as a drying agent. Therefore, this flower spike simply dried. Now, I didn't have this happen with the bigger Phalaenopsis there because it has a thicker spike. But this being a mini Phalaenopsis, it was just too fragile. It simply desiccated all the way and the flower spike just bent. So, yeah, that's not good. I wanted to make this experiment longer, but there we go. However, we do have some conclusions to draw. Some really important ones. So as you can see, the food dye did manage to reach the flowers. They're not completely blue. The flowers were already open for quite a lot of time. So the food dye primarily went to the flowers, as you can see. We have some clear blue in the flowers here. And the point of this experiment was to see if the sap actually goes back into the leaves, if it is recirculated, if it is pulled back into the orchid. I made a little prediction with myself. I presumed it would not go back into the leaves. Turns out I was wrong. So let's take a look at the leaf. Oh, I really hope you can see on this camera. This is blue veining. This is some more blue veining. Let's see if against the light we can see it better. There we go. This is blue veining here blue veining here as well. This is the newest leaf. I checked the other leaves. I do not see any blue hints. So it did recirculate. It did went back into the leaves, but only the new leaf because I'm presuming this one gets more food than the other ones since it's newer. It might still be growing. I don't know, as you can see, it's tinier than this one. So it might not be fully grown just yet. It gets more food from this orchid. All the other leaves did not get any blue veining on them. It's just this one and I think it's pretty obvious. So what can we deduct from this? Well, obviously the sap recirculates to a certain extent. I also didn't show you the roots. I did not see any blue pigment on the roots. Also, as you can see, I did not have any dripping from the flower spike on the roots. I was very careful with that, but the roots did not get a blue tint. 
All that got colored was the latest leaf here, and of course primarily the flowers, because they're the main focus for this orchid right now. Now I did this experiment because you know there are some articles or some people who suggest Flower spikes can provide some nutrients for the plant when they die off and actually the orchid sucks back the nutrients. I always thought it's not the case, but now I'm starting to think it is. Now being that the flower spike is broken, I cannot fully experiment this, sadly, and I really don't want to color any more orchids. I have two blue colored orchids. I have suspicions that this color dye is not really appropriate for orchids. I think the companies who make blue orchids use a different type of dye, one that it's not so desiccant for the orchids, because if this happened to the flower spike, I'm not sure what's going to happen to the leaves. Therefore, I don't want to really paint any other orchid. If I find another mini white Phalaenopsis, I might do that, although I don't enjoy it. But as you can see, sap is recirculated. Now, this doesn't mean that flowers actually help the orchid. While flowers are still on the orchid, you can see they are the primarily focus of the orchid. So whatever food it produces, it directs it to the flowers, first and foremost, if it has flower spikes. If not, it goes into the new structures. And I did use quite a lot of pigment, and as you can see, I do have a lot of pigment in the flowers, a lot more compared to the few vining that I have here on the leaf. You can see I only have a little bit here, and a little bit here. It's not a lot, but it is something. So it didn't push a lot of nutrients into this new leaf, only a part of them. The main food went into the flowers and their well-being, as you can see. Now, when the flowers fade, there is a high chance that your kid sucks back nutrients from the flower spike. So alrighty, guys, this is the experiment for today. Sadly, it ended abruptly. We'll see if I continue it. I'm really curious about the sap uh, recirculation thing. Now I know it does recirculate in a lower quantity and in developing growths or new growths, not completely. So that gives me a new perspective on orchids. Who knows when this will come in handy. I hope you enjoyed this experiment and you learned something new and now I'll keep you up to date with what happens to this orchid and if the dye actually does anything bad to it. On the other one, it doesn't appear to do anything bad. Let's get you a close look. Being that the other one has a thicker flower spike, it didn't completely break, but I do see some wrinkles around the cut wound. So yeah, it is a desiccant, this food dye. I'm not sure how it's gonna look on the long run, but of course I'll keep you up to date. So alrighty, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! So a little update on my pendant cymbidium. Somebody managed to ID it for me. It's a Sarah Jean uh, Ice Cascade. I suspected it was a Sarah Jean, but I wasn't really sure if it was the Ice Cascade because the flowers were kind of pinkish and indeed they turn pink when they are on their way out. And as you can see, my orchid lost almost all of its flowers. That's okay. It's been in bloom for the past two months. It's been in the flower shop for two months already. Change of environment, everything is okay. But yeah, this is a Sarah Jean Ice Cascade. If you want to look for it, I'll add this name in the description down below. So that's what this guy is. I'm really happy about it. I love this Nvidia.